think in my work is that when we come across it, I think most people find it slightly uncomfortable. They're sort of pushed away from it. They find it too much almost. They're averse to it because it is unfamiliar. We don't know it. But then if they spend more time with it, they're more likely to come back in because they're intrigued or they see themselves reflected back in it and they empathise with it. A Miracle Constantly Repeated is my exhibition at Flinders Street Station, which is part of the Rising Festival. We do live in a miracle constantly repeated. It is amazing that anything gets born and that we evolved to live in this place at this time with all the other creatures living around us. But also at the same time, it's just got this everydayness about it that makes it very easy to dismiss it as kind of usual. And so in a way, it's this sort of reminder to be aware that all this could go because it actually is a miracle. One of the fantastic things about having an exhibition at Flinders Street Station is that I make these works that are not real and then I place them in an environment that is really real but kind of mythological. And so you see these extraordinary unexplainable objects in this sort of very matter-of-fact space, like it's a station. There's this real rhythm of coming in and out of reality and fantasy. Like you go in the corridor and here's the trains. Then you go back into this room and here's another experience, which is really otherworldly. And then you come back out and here are the people catching the trains. It's such a fantastic opportunity for art because that doesn't happen in a gallery. You're always in the gallery, whereas here, you're in this hybrid space. I really liked how the station facilitated a different reading of a work that I'd made previously. Uh, for example, there's a work in there called The Couple. I thought, oh, I could make them look like they're squatting in here, like in the center of the city. And they're sort of going around looking at how humans interact and what they're interested in and they're bringing back all these things and this is their little world where they're trying to understand how humans live. I think it is a really experiential exhibition. In a place like the ballroom, there's a lot of being because you're moving in this space that's really pretty grand and it's steeped in history and there's music and you're seeing yourself reflected in this kind of tree that's coming in and out of focus because it's a mirror tree and it's a kind of mythological tree. It's like you've grown from a seed, which is a mirror ball, and you're there. And it's a space to just be in a way that we're not able to be in our physical bodies very often. For all of my artistic practice, I've been really interested in how we define the natural and the artificial. And I've often seen that in terms of relationships, relationships with other animals, our bodies, and the environment, because we're in the middle of an environmental crisis. Traditionally, we see ourselves as apart from nature. In the world that I create, these boundaries are kind of collapsing or kind of merging. The idea of nature as a, a nurturing body is something that's always available to us. Perhaps we need to think of it as a kind of a reciprocal thing where we really need to care. What I would really like is that people experience that journey from aversion to warmth. And that is the sort of dynamic in each of the work. It's really interesting that we don't have a word for love of difference. We have a word for hate of difference and of phobia, but we don't have a word for love of difference. I'm just waiting for someone to create it. <laughs> Maybe someone who comes to my show will do it.